thankful, thankful. Praise God. Praise God. That's something to be thankful for. Amen. Praise God. And I bless him every day. I bless him and I thank him because he's just an awesome, awesome, awesome. And he will see you through any situation. And I know that for a fact. Yes, he can. Praise yes. God. Thank you, Mother Ham, for sharing your birthday uh, testimony with us. Praise God. Birthdays are great days, aren't they? Well, yeah. it's, it's prayer time. And yeah. uh, we're, we're coming on, on to prayer tonight with just a great, great praise report. Mother Ham's birthday is today. And so, of course, if we are we're not on Zoom, everybody would just tell her happy birthday. And if there's anybody that wants to tell Mother Ham a, a happy birthday, as a matter of fact, uh, in a few moments, we'll take a little time to do that and just bless her for today today. Um, just before we do that, let's take a little time as we always do on Wednesday nights and let's just stop and settle our minds, settle our spirits, kind of take a deep breath and prepare ourselves for the consecration and meditation of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Master, we thank you tonight for this time of prayer. Thank you for today, God. Thank you for the praying spirit that you gave us today and for reminding us to take time to pray. Hallelujah, God, we've just been in communication with you today and we appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh God, we thank you today. Now, God, as we move into prayer and uh, into Bible study, would you let your presence be felt. Let your presence be known. Send us a word tonight, God, that would give us uh, even more than encouragement, but that would show us healing, that would show us open doors during these troubling times. Hallelujah, God. We pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So are there any prayer requests tonight? Any prayer requests or praise reports? I'm still asking for prayer for uh, myself and just some new things that God is doing for me career-wise. I'm not even sure exactly what direction he's going, but I'm just, uh, as the song says, I'm expecting great things. And so that I, I know that God is doing new things. Also asking for prayer for myself and my girls um, as they are navigating high school, they're both, you know, trying to do sports and it's just a, a full life for all of us. So just praying that God would help us as we're navigating this new area of life and schedule. So God, you hear, you hear these requests from uh, Pastor Shannon tonight. I pray that um, somehow, God, that, that we'll just know that you're working things out for the best. You always do. You always do. Hallelujah, God. And so now we pray with faith and we pray with thanksgiving that as she makes these uh, moves, God, toward what her career is going toward, that you would fix it and you, God, would uh, not only make wise choices for her, but that whatever decisions others make, God, that they would be not just for her best interest, but in your will. Bless the girls, God, as they grow older. They live in a time when it is it's just so dangerous for our young people. But you know, Master, you know. Master, you know. Take care of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Other prayer requests tonight? Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, Brother Scott. Go ahead. How you doing, Pastor? I'm doing good. How you doing tonight, Brother Scott? I'm great. I'm great. Glad you're doing well. And I hope everyone on the line is doing fantastic. I just have a praise report. Praise I God. Just wanna, I want to thank the Lord for my mother, Mother Ham. She has, um, the Lord has blessed her to see another birthday today, another year. So yeah. um, I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful I'm thankful for both my parents, um, my father who's passed away, but I just thank, thank God that 
he blessed me and my brother to have just incredible parents mm-hmm. that raised us, just raised us right. And um, I just thank my thank the Lord for allowing my mom to see another year. So happy birthday, mom! Praise God! Praise God! Thank you, thank you for that, Scott. Thank you for that. Listen, I I, too, I want to take some time uh, just to say happy birthday to to Mother Ham. I've known Mother Ham. I've been in Buffalo now for uh, let me see, um, fifty four years, and I've known Mother Ham that entire fifty four years that I've been in Buffalo. I've always known her just to be a woman of God. Um, always known her coming to church and watching her sing in the choir, be involved. She's always been the same. Always a smile on her face and a, a positive thinker, an encourager, and a helper of people. Loving not only God but loving people. Mother Ham, you are indeed one of God's blessings in this world. Happy birthday, happy birthday, and many, 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 many more blessed and uh, healthy and happy years to you. God bless. Anybody else want to come on and say happy birthday to Mother Ham as we go into prayer tonight? Happy birthday, Lucretia Jr. (laughs) Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, Yeah, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, indeed. Okay, happy birthday, Mother Ham. Thank you. It's been Thanks a so much blessing to me. I didn't forget. It's been a blessing to me to get me on the line for prayer, mm-hmm. for yeah. praying yeah. for me and and Gil and uh, just and your son. He prays for us too, you know. And I just thank you because you've too big. been a blessing to me. And I thank you so much so much. I pray for you and your family, and God going to give you a whole lot of years. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Praise so have Christ. a blessed rest of the day. Okay? Thank, God, thank you so much, Mother Gilf. Mother Gilf's birthday was two days ago. No, happy birthday, Mother Gilford. She's October thank the you. 2nd. She was two oh, days yeah. ago. The Lord blessed thank her you. to see another year. So we want to say happy birthday to Mother Gilford. Happy birthday, Mother Gilford. Belated happy happy birthday, birthday, Mommy. And God bless you, Mother Ham. Thank you. I praise God for you. I remember when I was in the hospital, all those days you came and sat with me. You are truly a blessing to the body of Christ. And I thank God for you. Happy birthday. I would sing happy birthday, but I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Mother Rose. Please, thank you so happy birthday, Mother Ham with the crazy shoes. And happy birthday, Mother Gilford. <laughs> Ooh, thank, yeah, thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Dooley. Yeah, right. Thank you so much. <laughs> I already said happy birthday to Mother Ham. Now I'm saying happy birthday to Mother Guilford. May you have many more, both of you. Thank you so God much. God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. God. Anybody else? Praise God. Happy birthday again, Mother Ham. So we're going to buy, as we go into prayer tonight, let's remember uh, many of those that we keep on the prayer list. Uh, all day today, I, I, I'm going to call him a bit later. My mind has been on uh, Superintendent Gerald, Pastor Gerald, who was in that awful, awful automobile accident on last week. He sent out pictures of the car. And I think my wife said that uh, the doctors told him he didn't even know why he was he was still here. His car was just unbelievably demolished, but God brought him out. And we're praying that God continue to touch his body, that God will continue to touch his daughter's body. I'm praying for uh, Sister Gerald, First Lady Gerald, because uh, dealing with that 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 stress can be so taxing. God strengthened her 
give her the strength in her mind and in her spirit to be able, God, to be a help me to her husband at this time. Uh, God bless Elder Gerald. Heal him totally. Don't let there be any after effects. Don't let there be any pains or anything that's going to show up somewhere down the road, but just let him be totally and 100% healed tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, while I'm praying, I want to thank you for um, Elder Gretchen Harris tonight, that you continue to be with her, God. I continue to pray, God, for total healing. Hallelujah for total healing, God. We we continue to ask you for that. We continue to uh, intercede on her on her behalf. I thank you for the spirit, God, that she continues to have such a positive spirit, such a loving spirit. Thank you for her faith that just continues to hold on. God, I pray for that miracle of healing for her. I keep that on the altar daily, God. I pray for Pastor Harris, Pastor Robert Harris, God, as he takes care of his wife, strengthen him, strengthen him, strengthen him physically and mentally and spiritually, God, that, that um, he'll know, God, that you are holding on to him as he takes care of his wife. I pray for Sister Nicole now, Sister Nicole Hargrove, God. She's up sometime and she's down sometime, but she continues to hold on. It's been many years, God, that she has been going through, but she keeps a positive attitude, a positive outlook. I pray for her husband who still stays there and takes care of her, her children who are growing and who are moving on, God, in life in, in, as they watch their mother go through what she goes through. Oh, God, I thank you that there are examples of what it means to be able to hold on to you. I pray that you would continue to bless her. I still pray for my friend, Pastor Roland, there in the state of Louisiana. Pastor Scruggs, God, I pray for Pastor Scruggs, God. Work the miracle of, of taking care of her church. God, her life savings and uh, her life's work, her life's dream built it into building such a beautiful, beautiful church, God. And, and now because of cancer, God, uh, you took her husband home a couple of years ago. And now, God, the church was what she felt, all that she had left. And now she's about to lose that, God. But whatever happens, whatever happens, Master, let her know that she doesn't lose anything. Because if she keeps faith in you, you are all in all. Fix it now. Hallelujah. Fix it now, Jesus. Pray for Pastor Heal now. You will continue to touch his body and bless the work that he does in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I pray tonight as I'm praying for uh, my wife. Pray, God, I pray for her. I pray for her. I pray for my wife that her body might be well, that her body might be strong. She's such a dear, dear woman of God. I, I pray for Mother Ware, God, that you would uh, just continue to give her life, that you would continue to give her even a sound mind in her old age. God, you are a healer tonight. You are a deliverer tonight. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, God, fix it tonight. God, I thank you for me. I mm -hmm. thank you for me. God, nobody knows like I know. Hallelujah, I thank you, God, for me. Nobody knows like I know. I could have been gone, God, but you said live on. Continue to, uh, God, give me the healing that you've been doing for so long now. Continue, God, not only to give me life, not only to give me life, give me life, God, but take not your presence from me. Hallelujah, God, without you, nothing means anything. Be with me, strengthen me. Hallelujah, God, when, when uh, nothing else seems to work, God, give me the courage that I need to stand up for you. Sometimes, God, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I'm not sure. Hallelujah. But God, give me the courage that I need to stand up for righteousness, for holiness. 
in the name of Jesus. Not just me, God, but remember the preachers of the gospel everywhere. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world, there's some men and women of God who stand for truth, who stand for holiness, who stand for righteousness. Strengthen them now, encourage them now. God, this is what the world calls Pastoral Appreciation Month. But God, you always appreciate pastors after your own heart. Hallelujah, God, let pastors know that you're with them. Open doors, make ways out of no ways. Whatever pastors are going through, fix it tonight. Pastors and uh, remember pastors' families, God. Sometimes pastors' families are given a hard way to go when they were not even called uh, to preach the gospel, but you put them into that ministry of uh, family ministry. Take care of pastors' children and pastors' wives tonight, all over this land, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray tonight, again, for our young people. Oh, God, I pray for our young people. Oh, God, I pray for our young people. Hallelujah. We don't even understand, God, where the anger and where the animosity, where the pain and the hatred is coming from, those violent spirits. God, even today, we, we saw in the news that uh, near our, oh, God, what college was it? Uh, It'll come to me there in Maryland, God, there was a shooting there. Mm -hmm. Kids shooting on college campuses, God, where they ought to just be worried about trying to get an education. But that spirit of violence, Satan is just running havoc. Satan is just on a rampage. But you are still God. Mm -hmm. You are still God. God, he's loosed, but you are still God. Doesn't matter what Satan does, you are still God. Oh, God, you are still God. Parents tonight who are grieving the loss of children, oh, God, be with them. Nobody knows that pain like you know it, God. You know the pain that they're suffering. You know the heartache that they're going through. Just give them the assurance that you understand in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, fix it tonight. God, fix it tonight. God, fix it tonight. Hallelujah. God, even on this prayer line, God, there are parents who worry about their children, who want their children to be saved, who want their children, God, just to be all right. Hallelujah. You can fix that. You can fix that. We are praying about it. We are trusting you for it. Hallelujah, our children and our grandchildren, and we're not even selfish, God. We we know the pain that of the parents and grandparents uh, are, are suffering, watching children being lost. The devil, God, is loose. Satan is loose, but you are still God. You've never changed. You've always been the same. Now, God, go throughout this land, let people know that you're God. Do it as a testimony to who you are. So many people now choose not to believe in you. Prove yourself, God. Prove yourself. Prove it like you did in Bible days. You're still the same, God. Hallelujah. Nothing has changed about you. You're not God, shorter than that, shorter now than you were in your glory then. Hallelujah, you're no less power now than you had then. You are no less mighty now than you were then. Prove yourself, God. Be your own testimony to who you are. And then strengthen us, God. Oh, God, strengthen us. We want to be saved. We want to be in your will. Hallelujah, God, we want to be in your will. God, I pray now for our bodies. Pray now for our bodies. God, even though uh, they've got a new COVID booster because they're acknowledging that COVID isn't finished, COVID isn't over, but you've always been in charge of it, God. Hallelujah, God, you be our protector. Build a shield before us so that as we move through the land, God, we're protected from whatever is there. Just be a bubble around us. Protect our minds, protect our spirits. 
protect our bodies. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God, you are a healer tonight. God, you are a deliverer tonight. You are a way maker tonight. You are, God, a door opener tonight. Make ways out of no ways. God, your word says that you will give us the desires of our heart. Anything that we should ask in prayer, believing we shall receive. You hear our prayer tonight. Hallelujah, God, we acknowledge your word. We acknowledge your word. We believe in your word tonight. Let the Holy Spirit make an accession for us according to your will, even as we are praying right now. In the name of Jesus. Now bless us tonight while we're praying. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Listen, just before we close prayer tonight, is there anybody that just wants to uh, jo join the pastor and say a prayer tonight? Hallelujah. If not, we're going to go into the word. We're going to go into the word. Well, y'all know your pastor, don't you? Some of you do. Some people don't know me yet, but y'all, most of y'all know your pastor. So somebody come on the line and tell me, what did I preach about Sunday? <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> Wait, are y'all embarrassed to say, I, what did I preach about Sunday? I would pray, Pastor, but there's a lot of people around me right now, and there's too much noise. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elder Shaw. I understand that. Uh, Elder Shaw, we, we can keep, continue to keep your home and your family in prayer. Um, I keep them in prayer because they are my kids. They are my kids, and uh, all of them, uh, whenever they're around, they're always so respectful and so loving, and I, I appreciate them when they uh, come around. They they really are. I keep them in prayer. Thank you for that. So nobody remembers what the pastor preached about Sunday. I got to start doing better. So since you don't remember what I preached about Sunday, I got to do review. I am uh, I'm an old school teacher, and one thing I found out is sometimes you have to go back and do review. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Review. Part of it is because um. I try to preach messages that are meaningful to me. And even after I preach them, uh, they, they resonate in my spirit. They, they stay on my mind. I ask God, God, when I preach, don't just let me uh, be doing a, a speaking exercise or an oratorical exercise. Don't let me just be up there talking. But God, uh, even when I'm preaching, let me preach to myself. Let me preach to myself. Let me say something, God, that's going to be meaningful to me. And uh, this sermon, I've preached a number of times over the years. And sometimes I go back and think about it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those sermons that I just feel is fitting for this time. I want to be able to say that um, not only the pandemic you know, but the financial crisis and uh, the political crisis. We're in the midst of a political crisis. You know, isn't it amazing that we keep reading in the news something that happened and, and it's been a lot of storms. This is the first time in history that this storm has occurred. Hurricanes, when there have never been a hurricane that bad happened in that area. And I keep on saying, y'all join me in praying because I keep saying, God, uh, last year when those rains were coming and those mudslides out in California and they were saying this is the worst that's ever happened uh, those hurricanes I said God uh, what would it look like in Buffalo if we would get something and they would say this is the worst one that ever happened well it happened it happened that blizzard that came and, and I keep saying now, God, what if something comes along now and they say this is the worst one that ever hit Buffalo? Help us to stand. God, whatever, help us to stand. I, I thank God for my my wife. Uh just just uh she's taking care of me and uh she's just 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 taking care of the house. And uh, we've agreed we we've got to do it. I've got to stick to my word. Uh I want us to go out and uh, bit at a time begin 
stocking up for the winter. Uh, yeah, I believe in having faith, but sometimes it's a great thing to have wisdom. I I'll say this. Uh, she's sitting right here beside me. And so I'm not even going to look at her face when I said this. I said, you know, uh, canned foods have a lot of salt in them. And we don't need so much salt. So I think I'm going to tell Sister Vanessa, let's go and get some mason jars. And let's go and get a lot of stuff. And let's take some time and we're going to can some food ourselves. I'm, I, I shouldn't even look at her face. <laughs> and I want y'all looking at her face either. <laughs> but I remember my mother, my mother used to go out and buy chickens. Can y'all believe this? Buy chickens, take them home and cook chicken and can the meat. She'd go out and get her uh, corn and okra and tomatoes and make a, a base for a soup and can it. And then all winter long, we, we would go out in August and get purple hull peas by the bushels and bushels and shell them and can them. And all winter long, uh, when, when mama would come in from work, she, she would say, Jeff, go down and get uh, one of those jars of chickens and a jar of uh, peas, and, and we'd have dinner there. Um, I don't know, and, and I'm not saying anybody should can, but we ought to start getting ready for uh, the winter. We really should. Uh, just don't know what's going to happen. I pray that nothing comes along like that. Let's pray to say let's have a mild winter. But I started off by saying, um, it isn't over yet. It isn't over yet. Uh, even the doctors are acknowledging that not only is COVID not over, but they keep coming these new strands. Pastor, um, uh, yeah, uh, First Lady and I went yesterday to get flu shots and COVID shots. And they were saying, uh, years ago, I got a shingles vaccine. And they said, if you get this vaccine, it will last for a lifetime. And even though they promised it would last for a lifetime, they are saying now, well, you better get another one because we thought that one would last for a lifetime, but we are finding that it didn't. We need to get another one. Uh, I got that pneumonia shot a few decades ago. They said, we've come out with the pneumonia vaccine. If you get this one, you'll never have to take another one. And they are saying now, I, I get information sometimes. They're saying, even if you got that one, you need to get another one. Stuff just keeps going on. But isn't it even amazing that in politics, yesterday, the Speaker of the House was voted out of his job, leaving in the House no head. And they said that's the first time in history uh, some reported that the last time it happened was decades and decades ago. Some are saying, isn't, isn't it amazing that these first just keep coming along, just keep happening? It isn't over yet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go back and, and talk about that message that I preached Sunday and even give it a title. Sunday, I preached from the 26th chapter of the book of Genesis. Let me just, uh, let me find it. And read just a little bit of it again. I'm, I'm going to just start right with the first verse. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. You remember the history of this lesson. Um, Abraham ended up going to Gera. There was a famine wherever Abraham was, and Abraham was uh, sort of wandering around, moving toward uh, where God had sent him. God said to Abram, uh, get up and leave your father's house and leave the country of your father and go to a land that I'm going to show you. You remember the story. Abraham got up and took his wife, Sarah, and all of his servants and took his nephews, uh, Lot, and just 
started going. He, he didn't know where, moving on faith. And Abraham operated so in faith in all of his dealings that God said to Abraham, you know what, Abraham, you have so much in faith in me that I'm going to count your faith as righteousness. Just because you believe in me, I'm just going to say you're right, that you are okay. Isaac became what is known as the son of the promise. God said to Abraham, uh, who had no children, and to Sarah, who was barren, in your old age, I'm going to give you a child. Both of them said it's, it's too late. There's so many lessons, so many lessons that, that um, inherit in this entire story. And you remember um, Sarah, in her lack of faith, said to Abraham, go and take my maidservant, Hagar, and uh, have a child. And since I can't have one, this will be the child. Isn't it amazing that sometimes we, we find our own ways of trying to work things out? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of that sometimes. Sometimes I need to know, I need to see how to do things and how things are going to be done. And, and sometimes um, uh, God says to me, just have faith. I'm going to take care of it. And I, I'm, I'm almost guilty of trying to work it out myself sometimes. And so often have just messed things up trying to fix it myself. They had a son, Ishmael, they named him. And finally, uh, they had to send Ishmael uh, away. Um, I won't even take time to, to go into the details of that story. But God kept his promise, gave them Isaac, the son of the promise. Ultimately, um, Abraham had to send back to Canaan and get a wife for Isaac. And then both Abraham and Sarah died, and Isaac now becomes the patriarch of the family. And now the Bible said, uh, when, when, when Ab you remember the story, Abraham ended up having to go down to uh, Gera. And uh, when Ab Abraham went to Gera, uh, Sarah was such a beautiful woman, beautiful woman, that he thought that uh, they were going to kill him and take his wife. So he said, she's my sister. And the king took her because she was so beautiful. What is amazing is, isn't it great how God protects you even in your own ignorance? You remember the story. Um, Abraham ended up getting Sarah back and was chastened for his lack of faith even in that situation. The story continues. And now the Bible says in that same land, a famine occurs just as it did in the days of Abraham. And Isaac had to get up and leave because there was a famine. Uh, I've been trying to get away from this prophecy and, and this saying, but it still holds true. Uh, he got up and recognized this, this is a famine going on. And so he had to find his place in God. He got up and went to Gira, took everything he had. When he got there, the same thing happened because his wife was so beautiful. He was willing to give her up to save his own neck. <laughs> um, I, I, won't even, uh, I won't even go into those lessons. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that, that, that even though we believe in God and, and we love God, this human nature, human nature that just causes us to do some strange, strange things. Even though he was a patriarch, man of God, he was willing to just give his wife up, said, you know, hey, you, you go on. I got to try to live and make it the best way I can. But God is so good. The same thing happened. The same thing happened. Um, Abimelech, here's what's crazy.
Pastor, you're frozen. Okay, I'm sorry. My computer crashed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Shannon called me. Her phone froze up just as um, my computer froze up. Isn't that crazy? So let me ask a question. Who picked up the slack and was teaching as soon as my computer crashed? I'm testing Ephesus tonight. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Listen, y'all, somebody's got to pick up the slack and carry on, but praise God, we're here, we're here. Uh, yes, my computer crashed. In the old days, I remember exactly where I was. Did anybody rem does anybody remember? I don't even remember where I was. I was talking about Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Uh, anyway, Isaac ended up getting Sarah back. Uh, 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 Rebecca, excuse me. Isaac ended up getting his wife, Rebecca, back. But let's get into the meat of the lesson. The, the subject that I chose for tonight's lesson, I know that I did, um, I don't think I took a subject Sunday, but tonight's lesson is um, living in a strange land. Living in a strange land. Oh my God, we live in such strange times now. Live in strange land. I um I look and see this world that we're living in. I, I was saying to my wife yesterday, I, I have, you know, you, you go into so, so, so many places. You deal with so many places where customer service and, and just uh, client relations, as I call it, has gotten lousy, you know? I go to Wendy's and have to stand in line because they're short-staffed. I hate going to the bank now. I hate going in the bank because very often when I go in the bank and, and I have to go every week to take care of some business and sometimes there will be a line and there will be one teller. And what is even crazy, I, I go in the bank and there will be, sometimes there will be one teller taking care of the drive-in window and alternating at the same time, taking care of the customers in line. And I will ask them, what is wrong? And they say, we, we can't find people. But then I would talk with people who are struggling financially and they would say, we can't find jobs. How do we live in this strange land? The cost of food is just going up so uh, uh, so so tremendously, so absolutely unbelievably that it's just, I mean, it, it, it's amazing now. Uh, I can run into the grocery store just to pick up one or two items. And I think I'm just getting one or two items. Sometimes don't even get a cart, just one or two items. And I don't even buy a bag 
because I say these two or three items, I, I, I can just carry them out in my hand. And I've spent 20 or $30 just to run in and run out. And I dare not go to Walmart. It's a shame. I, I can go to Walmart to pick up one thing. And you know how it is when you go to Walmart, you, you think you're going in just to pick up one item and you say, well, let me get this while I'm here. Let, let me grab this while I'm here. And you get not even a cart full of stuff, not even half a cart full of stuff. And you spent over a hundred dollars economically. We're living in a strange land. I talked about that, but but in our own spiritual lives, we may not talk about it a lot, but I would be willing to guarantee you all of us sort of recognize this, that, that sometimes in our own spiritual lives, we are struggling, recognizing that, that not only, God, do I need to pray more, but I would love to ask for a show of hands, but I wouldn't dare do that. I show my hand, sometimes asking God, I know I'm praying. I know I'm praying, but do you hear me? God, do you hear me? God, don't you answer prayer? I believe there have been some times in my life when I have prayed, and as a result of my prayer, I've almost gotten an immediate answer. I, I would love to see anybody you know uh, can say the same thing. Well, there have been times in your life you've prayed and you've gotten an immediate answer. Anybody? Anybody? So every now and then I need an interactive Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I hate about Zoom? Uh, we all are not there and and... And so we get kind of lazy and sit back, but uh, we we ought to we ought to interact, you know, together. Is there anybody here that that sometime now you recognize that there are time, there were times in my life when I prayed and immediately God moved, but sometimes now it just seems like uh, God, where are you? Anybody? Oh yeah. Uh, I see one hand. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. My wife just put her hand up. Thank you, baby. Anybody else? Everybody else can can really say, I don't have that problem. I, every time I pray, God answers me. No, I understand what you're saying, Pastor. I, amen to what you say. Amen to that. Thank you, Brother Scott. Thank you, all of you. All of you. Thank you. Because, yeah, sometimes it seems like God there is not just a famine in the land, but God, sometimes it seems that there is a spiritual famine. And I know it seems like I'm, I'm even radical with the church, but um, even in the organized church, and, and sometimes it seems like I'm always beating up the church, I'm always negative, I'm always beating up the church, I'm always negative, but I will tell you what, if you think I'm negative, go and read the Bible. Mm. Hallelujah. Let me give you two Bible scriptures. Jeremiah 5, I think it is, in 31. Uh, or is it 31 and 5? Um, no, I don't want to change my Bible. I'm, I, I, won't, I won't go exactly to it. But there's a scripture that said there was a time that came when the, the prophesy, prophets prophesied uh, just whatever they wanted to prophesy. And the priest worked just to get money. He said, and my people love to have it so. Oh, my God, that's in the Bible. It's not just me saying it. I, I, I really do kind of halfway. Um, I'm going to come back to Genesis. But I got to find that. Jeremiah, y'all stay with me. Jeremiah 5 and 31. I thought so. Read that. If you have that, would you read it, Elder? Oh, you know what? Oh, I know you You and I got a lot of noise there around you. Somebody grab that and read it for me. The prophets prophesied falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just me being negative about the church. It talks about even then what happens to the church, what people have done to God's house. 
the prophets prophesy falsely. The priests rule just for their own means and people absolutely love it. And then Paul said to Timothy, he said, Timothy, there's gonna come a time when people won't stand for sound doctrine, but they will have itching ears. We live there now. Do y'all know people don't want to know the truth? People don't want to know the truth. People will run all over the city for what's false. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to stop talking about this the, the, the false praise that's going on. It's got to sicken God. Um, nobody loves praise better than I do. I, I love praise. Oh God, I love praise. I, I love praise. I love church. But so much of what's going on now has nothing to do with the true praise of God. There is a, a, a famine in terms of the true spirit of worship. Hallelujah. The true spirit of worship, there's a famine. Think for a moment, um, do a self-analysis while I'm teaching, a self-analysis while I am talking. What's going on in your own life? Spiritually, in terms of your own spiritual strength, in terms of, of the power that you get through prayer. Do you know nobody knows what's inside of you but you? Nobody knows what's in your heart but you. But when you have uh, an effective, meaningful prayer life, there is a power that comes with that. Can you assess the power that you have? Can you can you say you know, based upon my faith in what I know about God, what I know about God's word? Pastor, I really do believe that I have the power that comes with prayer because I spend time praying. I spend time in God's word. Uh, I do. I do. I, uh, I spend time praying. Praying is not always out loud. Um, Jesus kneeled when he prayed. And so, so yeah, it means something to get on your knees when you pray, but sometimes it's always about stopping to get on your knees when you pray. It's, it, it's knowing, hallelujah, that you keep that always communication with God. Can you get in touch with your spiritual self that has a connection with God? What about the spiritual famine? So many people have given up. It breaks my heart to see people who used to be faithful, not only in God's house, but faithful in their walk with God, faithful just in their commitment to God, who have given up and gone home. Mm. There is a famine. But let me... Not stop there. Give me a second. I'm going right back to Genesis 26. Twenty-six and three. Uh, as a matter of fact, go to two. And the Lord appeared unto him, Isaac. God appeared to Isaac and said, "Don't go into Egypt. Egypt was." always known, you know, it, Egypt was uh, right there at the Nile. Egypt had a number of waterways and uh, Egypt was very cultured. Egypt had it going on. People knew if you can get to Egypt. Uh, uh, Gira essentially becomes a place of refuge. The word Gira meant that people would take a pilgrimage and a trip to find a place of refuge. Egypt was not only a place of refuge, but it was a it was a place where you could just go and enjoy being because they really had it going on. 
and and you know it's the the, the world is so much a, a lot like that today people just feel like um you know we, we need to find in the midst of all of these troubles times we need to find some place where they really really got it going on where is it really going on <laughs> somebody asked me um back this summer I, I can't remember i was i was i was sort of in a meeting and they said to me can you name us two or three of the churches in on the east side that really have it going on <laughs> and i really wanted to see them idiots pardon me I take that back i said i'm gonna stop calling people idiots I really wanted to see them. Please explain to me what you mean when you say churches that have it going on. Typically, they're talking about churches that seem to have a lot of life. The music is good. The pastor is great. People are there and enjoying themselves. But what about the power of the Holy Ghost? What about the presence of God? And so God said to Isaac, yes, if you can get to Egypt, there's not a famine going on there. He says, but I don't want you to go to Egypt. Let me show you a little something. Ultimately, God knew because God had already told Abraham, I think it's somewhere back around the 13th chapter of Genesis, God had said to Abraham, this great, great nation that I have promised you that I'm going to build from you, before I build them, I'm going to send them into bondage. And he sent them to Egypt when Egypt was flourishing. They went when Egypt was flourishing. They were well fed. They were welcomed, not knowing that the time would come when it would be a place of bondage. Sometime what we think is that which is going to make everything be all right places us in bondage. Hmm. Huh. Do you know sometimes that which we think is a blessing ultimately is that which strangles us? How many people have gone past the age of retirement because they just got so many blessings, they thought it was blessings that now they still got to work because they're so deep in debt, they can't even begin to pay off their debts. That which they enjoyed has now become the place of bondage to them. How many people now who were well fed, I mean, just ate off of the fat of the land, ate the absolute best. And now as a result of their diets, their bodies are full of sickness. That which sometimes seems to be what is good can ultimately come bondage. God said to him, don't go to Egypt because if you go to Egypt, you're going to get hung up down there and ultimately you're not going to be able to be where I want you to be. But he said to him, instead, go to Gera. We got to Gera. I, I wish I had time to... to uh, talk tonight. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. I, I have to give this as God gives it to me. Let me go back again and tell you what you do in a strange land when you are there because there's there's been a famine in your own land, not, not just uh, physically, but where are you spiritually? I'm talking to some people tonight who don't even tell anybody when they walk around during the day with their heart hurting. Talking to somebody who don't even tell anybody, you may see a smile on my face, mm -hmm. but if you only knew the days of depression, you may see me laughing and talking with you, but if you only knew the tears that are on the inside, yes, yes, I'm, I'm talking to you tonight. How do you know, Pastor Jeff? Because you're just like me, just like me. You've heard you you've heard me say. I said so many Sundays, and I said it tonight. Sometimes I say, God, you 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 must be God. You must hear me praying. Why aren't you changing things? Living in a strange land. God, I live in this strange land when 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 I'm dealing with uh, you know, we we, we deal with young people now. You, you, you used to read about it. 
you used to see it afar off, but now it's even in our own families where we see girls saying, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. <laughs> you see boys saying, I'm not a boy, I'm not a man, I'm a girl. Mm. You see how you have tried to set a destiny for young people. I, I look around Ephesus, I look Sunday, and, and when I sat in the pulpit Sunday and I looked around, I saw every young person in that church whose head was down on the phone. I'm not condemning them. It's the way of the world. It's the way of the world. We live in a strange land. And I raised the question, God, what can we do to bring our young people back? Um, I'll say this, just come right out and say it. Um, my grandson, Desmond, Desmond, I think it was a year before we left the more. I was trying to talk to him about some things and this idiot had the nerve to tell me, I'm a man just like you. <laughs> I'm a man just like you. And I said to him, you're that little boy that I raised. I changed your nasty, stinky diapers. And not only did I change your nasty, stinky diapers, when you get ready to go to work, the only way you're going to get to work is go out and drive my car. And you got the audacity to tell me that you are a man just like I am. Isn't it a strange land hmm. when your kids, there used to be a day, really, when I, uh, could have just slapped him down. I had to stop whipping my grandkids because the last time I tried to whip Alex, I was saying, ouch, because I was swinging the belt and he was moving. So I was taking just as many licks with the belt as he was. And I just decided I can't do this anymore. Strange land. We, we can't seem to do whatever we need to do to bring our young people around. Now that I've talked about the strange land, what do we do? The strange land. I'm going to go a little bit longer tonight. First of all, Isaac had to recognize that I'm here because God sent me here. I need to encourage myself. I need to encourage somebody else tonight that, that if we are committed to our faith in God, if we somehow have the commitment of knowing that God, I may not be all I think that I should be in you, but God, my faith is in you. If I'm not committed to anything else, God, I'm committed to believing in your word. I may not be perfectly holy, but I am committed to my faith in you. I'm committed, God, to regularly repenting because, God, from the bottom of my heart, I want to be saved. And then God says that if you want to be right, I sent my son Jesus to die on the cross. What I love about God is that God says every day I've got you covered. My mercies are new every day. Is anybody with me? Mm. Mm -hmm. Isaac knew, God, you told me to come here. You told me to come here. It's the first thing. Be committed to your faith. Be committed to your faith. Sometimes you've got to stop and say, God, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I, I don't know what the future holds. But right now, I'm going to trust in you and, and, and know that you are going to fix it. You're going to work it out. Secondly, the Bible said, back when Abraham went to Gera, Abraham dug wells. I'm, 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 I might have to go back and teach on this next week because I need to talk about that well thing. What does it mean to dig wells? As a matter of fact, I think I will pick up on that next week. I, uh, I, I don't have time to really deal with that effectively as I ought to tonight. But if you leave here tonight acknowledging and recognizing that sometimes I'm in a strange land, how do you know when you're living in a strange land? Is there 
any situation in your life tonight that causes you a little bit of heartache. It doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Any situation in your life tonight? Do you have anything going on in your body? I say to God, uh, sometimes even now, I would tell the truth. You know, I have arthritis in my knees and arthritis in my back. Uh, it, and, and, you know, I have some other people right on this line that knows what I'm talking about. I used to hear people sometime when they would talk about that arthritis would say, you know, I feel pain every day of my life. And I would say, God, nobody should have to live like that. And now I understand because arthritis, you know, some days it's, it's milder, some days it's worse, but it's just there. Not just arthritis, but I recognize um, um, yesterday, I got up and went out and got my lawnmower out and decided I'm going to mow the yard and do a lot of stuff. And I just never got to it. I finally had to say to my wife, I'm sorry. I just got to come in and lay down because my body can't do what it used to do. What about those things in your body? You know, those things that plague your spirit and your mind. Let's close. God, we thank you tonight. Because in spite of the fact that we are living to a, in, a, in a strange land, we're living on a strange land, God. Men and women who are in power call right wrong and wrong right. People no longer care about morality. People. Don't even try so often to be honest. And it seems like sometimes, God, those of us who are trying to do right just don't get anywhere. But those who intentionally to do wrong, like David said, the wicked flourish. But you're still God, and we thank you for that tonight. And so tonight, God, as we as we even prepare to hopefully continue through these series of, of lessons, maybe whatever they are, help us to learn how to find our place in you and hold on. Help us to understand that no matter what goes on in the world, you always take care of your children. Now we give you thanks. We give you praise for prayer and for your word tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, just before I close tonight, I'm so glad for Facebook. And those of you who are on Facebook, we're so glad you're here. I was talking with one of my cousins in Chicago today, and uh, she was telling me, I haven't talked with her in a long time. And uh, my, she's about 10 years or so older than me, but uh, she was telling me today, how much she enjoys our services and our prayer and Bible study on Facebook. She even was telling me um, some of the lessons that Shannon has taught and told me, yeah, I saw the first lady's uh, message. I enjoyed it so much. And so uh, sometimes I think I look at Facebook and I see three or four people and I almost wonder, is it even worth it? Today was so encouraging to me to find out that sometimes even when we think nobody is there, that there are people who are being blessed by this ministry. And so God bless you. Um, those of you here on Zoom, Ephesus, let's keep getting the word out that there is a word from the Lord, even on Facebook. God bless you tonight. Now, God, again, again, give us a peaceful sleep tonight. Let us lay our heads down on the pillows and rest all night long. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm. God bless everybody. Good night and be blessed tonight. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Love you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.